Welcome. This is 49G4 and this is about using a point charge to establish a non-uniform electric field. So now we're going to deal with a single point charge. And what we see is, uh, let's have a look at this. So here's the situation. We have a, a point charge, big Q, and we have a point of interest. And the point of interest goes from A and ends up at B. And I'm imagining this line that, that it follows. Um, the distance between the point charge and A is Ri. And the distance between the point charge and B is Rf. And I'm imagining a certain, a certain point here where uh, we're at a certain distance R from the point charge. It's in a direction given by r hat. Um, there's a certain angle between the direction of r hat and this little bit of length ds, which is theta. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn around and say, uh, what is the potential difference between point A, which is 3 meters, from a uh, q uh, Coulomb positive charge and point B which is 8 meters from the same charge um, okay we don't actually use these numbers but I'll, I'll show that later um, well remember our quadrant let's put our quadrant in and we had E we had F equals QE we had uh, delta U equals the integral of QE dotted with D and we had del U delta V is equal to the integral of E dotted with D. Well, okay, <laughs> we're going to change things a little bit and in this we're going to talk about this little bit of length ds. So we say, okay, delta V equals the integral of E dotted with ds. There's a negative sign there and I'll come back to that in a minute, okay? Um, if we remember, we're gonna use it, but I'll explain where it comes from in a minute. If we remember that E is equal to KEQ over R squared R hat, so we know that guy, then E dot DS becomes KEQ over R squared R hat dotted with DS, okay? So, I've got to deal with this dotted with ds business. Well, r dotted with ds is the magnitude of r hat, which is it's a unit vector, so it's 1. And then the magnitude of ds, which is ds, times the cosine of the angle between them. And the angle between them is that theta that I'm just pointing to here, behind the dr. Well, we also actually can use trig on this, can't we? And we can say this little bit of length radially is equal to ds cosine r. ds is the hypotenuse. And so we say e dotted with ds is equal to, well, keq over r squared ds cosine theta. Because that's what, uh, well, ds cosine theta. And so we say, well, ds cosine theta is equal to dr. And so we get KEQ over R squared dr. Okay. So delta V is equal to minus the integral of E dotted with ds, which equals minus the integral of KEQ over R squared dr, which equals minus KEQ. It's going to be minus 1 over R, because there's the integral. We integrated the 1 over R squared with respect to dr. K, E was constant, Q was constant. So, when we do this, what we find is we get delta V equals K, E, Q, 1 over R final minus 1 over R initial for the potential difference between these points. Now, in my class, I'd like you to know this equation. So, you don't particularly have to know how it's derived. It's just an integration. But this gets asked a fair bit. And uh, what you can also do if you want is you can remember the associated equation, which is delta U equals KEQ little Q 
1 over RF minus 1 over RI if you had a little charge, a little Q going from A to B. Now, I actually i am coming more and more to the idea that I simply say delta U is equal to Q times delta V. So figure out what delta V is and then multiply it by the little charge that you're moving around from point to point. This negative sign, this negative sign is to make the uh, um, the geometry come out right. If I have a positive and I have a whole bunch of voltage contour lines, so this is positive voltage and this is getting lower and lower and lower. So what shall I call this negative voltage on there? If I go in this direction, if I go away from the positive, if I go with the electric field, then I am going downhill. And so in order for this thing to work out so that when I have a positive charge and my potential and I move away from a positive charge, my potential is going more negative because I'm going downhill. I have to have that negative sign there. Some people remember that negative sign and they just use their signs automatically. And I used to do that. And now, as time passes, I'm at least in a phase, maybe it's not going to last forever, but I prefer to look at the diagrams. And so I ask myself, what is the charge? And if the charge is a positive, and I am going away, as I am in this case, I start off relatively close, and my point of interest goes further away, then I expect to get a a, a negative potential. Let's see if that works. So delta V is equal to KEQ. Where were those numbers we had? Oh yeah, we had from 3 to 8. So it's going to be 1 over 8 minus 1 over 3. Oh, I picked nice numbers, didn't I? So this will be KEQ and this would be what? 3 over 24 minus 8 over 24 which equals minus 5 over 24 Ke times Q. Can you see how provided that Q, the mother charge in the middle is positive in following this path down the hill further away I get a negative potential difference this would be volts and if this was a negative charge then because that Q would be negative, I would get a positive potential because I'm climbing out of a hole. So it's, it's a choice. You can remember these signs. My, my fear is that people remember the sign but don't really know how to apply it. Um, but it works. If you know how to apply it, if you're careful, it works fine. The alternative is you, you try to form this analogy with, with structure. And you say, am I going uphill or downhill? And then you'll get the right answer. I think you'll know it's right then. Either way, it works. Okay. So, let's look at two examples. So, let's get a pen on here. So, here we have a, a, a very situ a situation here. What is the potential difference between point A, which is four meters away from a plus two coulomb point charge and point B which is six meters away. So what we need to do is we need to recognize that our point of interest, it's not a charge, it's just a point of interest is moving from A to B. And so we say oh, our delta V is equal to Ke times the mother charge Q, one over our final minus one over our initial. So delta V is equal to Ke and the Q in this case is plus 2 1 over 6 minus 1 over 4 so this would be 2 Ke don't know if I gave myself enough room here this is 4 over 24 minus 6 over 24 so delta V is equal to 2Ke and this will be uh, um, 4 minus 6 is going to be 
minus 2 over 24 which equals minus 4 over 24 ke which equals minus and I get my calculator and I go 4 over 24 4 divided by 24 is equal to 4 divided by 24 is equal to 0 0.167 0 0.167 ke and it's going to be volts so and I do like people to bring it through to a, a decimal I don't want them to mess with ke but I don't want to have a fraction here and so I look and the nearest thing is that minus 0 0.17 ke volts okay so the next part is what is the change in potential energy would a 5.5 coulombs so this is not 0.5 coulombs it's positive and so I say well you know what my delta u is equal to q times my delta v so my delta u is equal to plus 0.5 times minus 0 0.167 ke so delta u is equal to multiply this times 0.5 it's going to be half of it which would be 0 minus 0 0.0 zero eight three 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 ke um, joules and I guess the nearest one is is that guy okay now let's see does does this make sense this is a positive charge so it's a mountain it's a volcano and I'm going from a point relatively high on it to a point lower down on it so I expect my change in contour to be going downhill, which is negative, which is what I got. And then I put a positive charge on there, which is like a boulder rolling down this hill. And I want to know the change in potential energy. Well, I started off with a high potential energy and I ended up with a low potential energy. And so in going from A to B, I've got a negative change in potential energy uh, um, for that. And so both of those make sense to me. There we have it.